Hello and welcome. My name is Ethan Hamlestrol, and in today's video, I'll be demonstrating how to generate and display documents in Microsoft Power Pages via Documents Core Pack. This video serves as a bit of a visual guide for a blog article that we offer on our website. So for a link to that and a link to the website itself, please make sure to check out the video description down below. Now then, let's get started. So here we are in Microsoft Power Pages. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be showing how you can generate a document on Power Pages and surface that document to your viewer or user, whoever is using the website. The objective of this is to show how we want to create a donation form, as that's what we want to do. We want to have a donation form on our website and allow people to submit their information. Then, after they submit that information, in the background, a document will be generated. And then, once the document has been generated, we will surface that document as a PDF to the viewer that they can then download as they need. Before we get into the actual example itself, I want to show exactly what we're trying to achieve here. You can see here in Microsoft Power Pages, we already have a finished donation form that we will be consulting throughout this example. If we go to preview, we'll go check out the desktop preview of this website and we'll see what this looks like. <clears throat> okay, so here is what our donation form looks like. You'll see that here that we have the donation name, the purpose of the donation, first name, last name, email amount, and donation category. So we're gonna go ahead and just demonstrate what that looks like. We're just gonna say charity and donation for charity. Nothing too special there. And then we're gonna go with test at example.com. We'll say test one, two, three. We'll go with a $15 donation, and then we're gonna go with just a donation, a basic donation category. Then after we submit it, it will take a moment to load. And so you see here, after it's done loading, it will show the finished generated document here right under the form. It says, hi, Ethan, thank you so much for your donation for, do donation for charity in the category of basic and so on. And so that's how generally this works. And that is the example that we're going to be trying to build towards today. Now, just as a note, before we continue on further, uh, if you are not familiar with Microsoft Power Pages, Automate, uh, Microsoft Power Automate and Documents Core Pack itself, specifically the connector, uh, then I would definitely recommend checking out information on that or checking out our blog articles on those topics on our website as well. So with that said, let's see how we get to creating this form. The first thing that we need to do is we would need to create the, clouds, the cloud flow itself. The cloud flow is important because what we want to do is after we submit this information, we're going to submit this information to a cloud flow that will then gen generate the document in the background for the user. To actually create this cloud flow, you want to make sure you go over to the setup tab and then go down to cloud flows down here. Then under cloud flows, you would want to create a new flow. When you click on create your own flow, you will be able to generate then a flow based on power pages. So from the connectors, what you would want to do then is you would want to type in power pages and then click on the option here. And there you will say, you will see that it shows when power pages calls a flow. Now this is important. This step is very important because this is where the information from the donation form will be passed into the flow. For any kind of field that you have on that form that you want to be that you want to have in the document itself, you want to make sure it gets passed into a respective variable. So as just an example, we had one of the fields be donation name. And so you want to make sure you have a field or an input called donation name. You can just leave it blank, of course. In fact, that's what you should do. 
just leave it blank because then when the flow actually executes after you submit the information it will take that information that you submitted and put it into this variable then at the very end it will take this all this information and then put it into the generated document now i won't necessarily be walking through the entire process itself but we do already have a flow that we have finished and i will be walking through that and this is the flow that we have. And this is the flow that we'll be calling upon in our donation form later. Here you can see that the first step, we have all of our inputs already entered. Donation name, purpose of donation, first name, last name, amount, category, and email. All of these will be passed into here at the very first step. As an addition to this, we want to make sure that for any kind of information that we do put in, we want to make sure we check if there is a contact that exists with some of the entered information. What we're trying to do is for the given information that we have, we want to create not just a donation record, but we also want to create a contact as our donation record requires or needs a contact to be created for it as well. So we would need to handle two separate cases. We would need to handle a case where if the information is submitted, if the contact is, has not been created already, then we just create a contact and a donation based on that. But we also need to handle a situation where if that contact already exists on our Dataverse environment, then we want to pull that already existing contact and put its information into the finished document. So we would check if the contact exists here at this step by filtering the row then we would get the id of the existing contact if it exists and get the number of rows which should be one or zero then from there we would check the number of rows after checking the number of rows then we would have to decide if we go down the yes or the no path so if there is a brand new contact that has not been already put into our environment uh, if we get that information from the donation form, then we go down the no path. So that means we would be creating a new contact for our donation record. So we'll check out that path first. So here we will create a new contact based on the submitted information, go with the context table and then put in the last name, email and first name. And these inputs come from the very first step that we already configured. Then we go to create a donation record, record and then fill in the rest of the information based on the, ta uh, the donations table and then put in the donation name, amount, category, the contact that we created and make sure it's formatted like this, the email and then the purpose of the donation. Then after that, we create the, do uh, the document from the donation record with the new contact as well. Here we select the template that we want to use the donation, we put in the actual donation record, select our file type, and you can choose to save it to SharePoint if you'd like. And then we put in the donation row ID and then enter in the donation table. And then finally, we return the document content. So whenever a document is generated through our Documents Core Pack connector, it returns a document content object. Now, in this case, what we want to do is we want to make sure that it is converted into a string as the document content object is a base 64 string. So you want to make sure that for this last step, you enter it as a string, enter the string expression, and then within the parentheses, put in the document content. And that's what you put in for the document content variable here as well. And now we check out the yes path, which is going to be very similar, just with one difference. And that is the get the existing contact instead of creating a new one. And here we take the output from the get the ID step and we just retrieve the contact. And then from there, we create a donation record, generate the document, and then return the document content, just like in the other step. That's all there is to it. And then you would just have to save your flow 
and then you return back to the Cloudflow's setup page. So <clears throat> after you create your flow for the first time, you will be prompted with this step, which is to add roles. You'll also be seeing the URL, which we'll get to in a second. When you want to add this flow to your website, you want to make sure you set the anonymous users role. That way, anybody who accesses the website will be able to submit the information and then successfully trigger the flow. And then after that, you can save it down there. Since we've already had this saved, we don't necessarily need to deal with that. But I also want to point out one other thing, and that will come important, uh, that will be important here in just a second, and that is the URL. You want to make sure that you copy this URL, which you can copy just by hitting that button, because we are going to be needing that for the code, which we will be getting into now. We're going to go back to our pages then. <clears throat> and what we want to do uh, is I'm just going to temporarily create a new page to show you how this will work. So when you're creating a the donation form for the first time, you want to make sure you start from blank. We'll say that the, call this we'll call this donation form test. And we'll hit add. And we have now a new blank page. On the newly created blank page, you don't have to do anything here. You don't have to add any text button or so on. But what we want to do is we want to make sure we go over to the Edit Code button and click on that. This will prompt us to open Visual Studio Code, which is what we want. Because what we ultimately want to do here is we want to put in our own custom code that will actually allow us to get the flow and then generate a document in the background. When you open Visual Studio Code, you'll be brought to this page. This is an HTML page. And this is where you'd be able to enter your own code. At, in our article that we have on our website, we actually already have the completed code file that you can add into the, your own HTML file here. And we would recommend using that so that way you'd be able to check out the code yourself and experiment with it on your own time. Now, I just wanted to show this as an example, as we already do have a finished form that we want to check out. So I'll go ahead and close this, hit exit there, and then go back to the already finished donation form. Once again, we'll edit the code, and we will just briefly check out what the code looks like there. So within our code, we have an HTML, CSS, and a JavaScript component to it. We're not going to be touching upon the CSS and HTML here, the most important thing that we want to touch upon is the JavaScript, as that is where a lot of the action is going to be happening. Of course, we do have the whole code file and our article that we offer on our website. So if you do want to take a look at the code, and of course, copy and paste it for your own needs, it is there for you. Uh, but for today, we're just going to be focusing on the script. So in the script, this is where a lot of the actual getting the input and providing the output happens. Down here is where the script starts. And you can see here we get the, the relevant divs. And you can see in this section, this is where we get all of the inputs from our donation form. So this is the actual donation name, the purpose of the donation, the amount, first name, last name, category, and email. And of course, if you ever want to add upon this, you can. So this is where we would get the inputs, or this is where the inputs are actually stored. And then we actually create a data object to store all of these variables within it. Then, and very importantly, we have the URL to our Cloudflow. I've already gone ahead and pasted the Cloudflow that we have already created. But what you will want to do is that whenever you're doing this yourself, you want to make sure you paste the URL to the, your own Cloudflow that you have created. So it'll go right here. Then, after we have copy and pasted the URL, we pass this into a payload and then pass this to the server. And this is where the information that we've entered and submitted, this is where it actually gets processed 
by the flow itself. So taking our inputs and any other information, it'll then give us back a response, which will then be stored into a result constant object. With the result, what we want to do then is we want to get the base64 string from our flow. So if you'll recall, at the end of our flow, we returned back a document content, content object that has been encoded as a string. That is very important, as that's what actually contains the actual document content. And so this gets stored in the result document content uh, variable, and then we store that into the actual PDF, uh, the data of the PDF itself. So you'll see here we have it set up here, data application slash PDF base64, and then the actual base64 string from the flow. And then finally we get the actual PDF div viewer that we have in our HTML, and then we append the actual PDF, the document content to this object, which then gets passed and then displayed as a PDF on our web page. So with that said, we can actually just go ahead and save this code. We can hit Control S. Then we can go back to Power Pages, and then we sync our changes. Every time you make a code change, you always want to make sure you sync your configurations. Otherwise, your page will not be up to date. So then, after the changes have been synced, you go to click Preview, and then you can actually check to see if this is working how you intended. So we're going to go ahead and click desktop preview to see what our actual website will look like with the changes that we've implemented. Okay, so now we have the donation form here. It's all loaded. And now we can put in our information. So we're going to put in a hospital Hospital donation. We'll say donation to the hospital. First name Ethan. Last name Stroll. And then we'll do test seven at test.com as our email. And then we'll put in one hundred dollars as our donation amount. And then for our donation category, we'll go with silver. And then we're going to go ahead and submit it. And now this is also going to take a moment to load our generated PDF. Okay. So then there we have it. And now our PDF has been generated. So you can see it says, Hi, Ethan. Thank you for your donation to donation to, well, for donation to the hospital. Category of silver. And it has some of the other information that we put in, such as your last name and the amount. And so it looks like the donation form worked and we have our generated PDF. And of course, if you ever want to, you can make sure you can save the PDF and save it to your system if you would like. So with that done and finished, it looks like we've shown off everything that we need to show today. If this video proved to be helpful then, uh, I hope that you might consider subscribing to our channel for other videos, consider liking the video, and uh, checking out our website as well for any other information related to Documents Core Pack. Uh, this is going to do it for this video, so that means I will see you in the next video then. Thank you once again for watching. Bye-bye.